what to consider when purchasing a laptop. Buying a laptop is often easier in theory than it is in practice. Even with a solid grasp of technical terms and a clear idea of your desired specifications, the process of finding the right one can prove to be challenging. Even the process of navigating the manufacturer's websites to locate a specific model can be an ordeal. In this video, we will help you navigate the world of modern laptops. We will tackle the confusing technical terminology and major components to keep in mind to hopefully leave you feeling confident and ready to make the best choice for you. Operating system. Before you begin your laptop hunt, you must first decide which operating system or OS works best for you. Think about what software you'll be running on a regular basis and the operating system that is most compatible, Windows. Windows is one of the original names in operating systems and is still a great choice to this day. The best choice if you need Microsoft apps like MS Office, PowerPoint, or Outlook. There are more Windows laptops to choose from than any other OS. Pairs well with Android products. Mac OS. Apple's Mac OS is a bit more beginner friendly than Windows, but there can be a learning curve if you're already more familiar with another operating system. This OS is only available on Apple computers, so it limits your choices in terms of laptop models strictly to MacBooks. Pairs well with other Apple products. Chrome OS. If you can do most of your laptop tasks in a web browser, Chrome OS is a good choice. Chrome laptops, called Chromebooks, are often among the cheapest and least powerful you'll find. Hard to find compatible apps. Things like Adobe's Creative Suites or Microsoft Office won't run. Processors, CPUs. Once you've got an operating system in mind and a rough idea of the software you plan to use, it's time to figure out the basic hardware requirements. Intel processors. Now let's look at how a laptop manufacturer might list the type of processor when you're browsing products. Intel, Core i5, 12, 510U. Intel, the brand. Core i5. Intel's main processors are the Core i3, Core i5, Core i7, and Core i9. The Core i3 is the least powerful, and the Core i9 is the most. 12. The first number, 12, refers to the generation. In this case, it's the 12th generation chip. A lower number would be an older model, 510. The next two or three numbers, 510, are related to performance. The higher these numbers are, the more powerful the chip is. U. The letter at the end of the chip name, U in our example, is Intel's designation for the chip's purpose. For laptops, the letters you'll see at the end are Y, U, and H. Y chips are optimized for battery life. Good if you're frequently away from a plug, but can compromise some performance. H chips are optimized for performance, which can compromise battery life. U chips are somewhere in the middle, balancing power efficiency and performance. AMD processors. Now let's look at how a laptop manufacturer might list the type of processors when you're browsing products. AMD Ryzen 5 7600X. AMD, the company. Ryzen 5. AMD's main processors are the Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, and Ryzen Threadripper. The Ryzen 3 is the least powerful, and the Ryzen 9 is the most. The Ryzen Threadripper is probably more powerful than what a basic consumer would need. 7. The first number, 7, is the generation. In this case, it's a fourth generation chip from the 7000 series. A lower number would be an older model. 6. The next number, 6, is related to performance. The higher this number is, the more powerful the chip is. 0, 0. The next two numbers, 0, 0, don't really affect anything. They are essentially the model number. X. The letter at the end of the chip name, X in our example, is AMD's designation for the chip's power. An X suffix simply means it's a slightly faster version of that model from the factory. A U suffix stands for ultra low power. They optimize battery life over performance. An H suffix stands for high performance. They optimize performance over battery life. A G suffix adds graphics performance. A T suffix stands for turbo. This suffix is often combined with another, just meaning they've made a processor work faster, i.e. XT is faster than X. 
Apple Silicon processors. Mac has recently began to transition from Intel processors to their in-house design chips. These will be found in any Mac laptop produced after 2021. They have since released multiple variants of their chipset. The first generation chips were called M1, and the second generation is M2. For each chip, the M2 variant will be incrementally higher performing than the first generation model. The M1 and M2. Each generation has a base variant. They will have enough processing power to get you through common tasks, like word processing and web browsing, and even light gaming or video editing. M1 Pro and M2 Pro. Next step up from the base variant. Ideal for anyone who works heavily on their MacBook for intermediate photo and video editing or music production. M1 Max and M2 Max. Next step up and extremely powerful. Excellent choice for anyone working with heavy duty tasks, such as viewing 8K or 4K video footage, 3D rendering, software development and demos, or other graphics intensive content. M1 Ultra and M2 Ultra, the most powerful variant of Apple Silicon processors. It is composed of two M1 or M2 Max chips, combining their processing power. This is the choice for anyone working with extremely heavy duty content that you believe the other chips won't be able to handle. With all these options in mind, it's best to think about how much power you will regularly be using, what software will be using, and to what extent. In general, if you're a typical user who runs a web browser, Microsoft Office Suite, and maybe even photo editing software, a laptop with a Core i5, Ryzen 5000 series, or base M chip will be sufficient. An i7, Ryzen 7000 series, or M Pro or Max chip is a step up if you want more power to complete heavier duty tasks, like gaming, high resolution video editing, or software development. Graphics cards. All laptops technically have graphics cards or GPU bundled with the processor. This is known as integrated graphics. This is fine for most users. You'll be able to watch HD movies, do some light gaming, or video editing without any issues. If you do more graphics intensive work, such as high resolution video editing, motion graphics, 3D rendering, or heavy duty gaming, you may want to invest in a discrete graphics card. These are separate to the cards included with your laptop and are much more powerful. AMD and Nvidia are the most prominent brands for graphic cards in laptops. RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. It is what your laptop uses to hold data while the processor does things with it. Scott Gilbertson from Wired.com says, to think of your RAM as your desk, all the things you're working on right now should be able to fit on your desk. If your desk is too small, things fall off and you can't work on them. RAM works in the same way, in that if you run out of it, you won't be able to complete your work until you clear off your desk by resetting your laptop. Eight gigabytes of RAM should be plenty for the average Windows user. Upgrading to 16 gigabytes will make your laptop feel much more capable, especially depending on your workload. If you're programming or editing high resolution video, 16 gigabytes is the minimum that you should be looking for. You'll probably be happier with 32 gigabytes. Hard drive. The hard drive is where you store all your data. Think of this as the filing cabinet next to your desk. Solid state drives or SSDs are the most common choice among laptop manufacturers. The minimum amount of space you should look for on a hard drive is 256 gigabytes. Although if you're storing a lot of photos, videos, games, or software, you should look at something with a bit more space. 500 gigabytes will be able to handle any OS and a decent variety of programs or media. A one terabyte or more SSD is only necessary if you're holding on to a lot of high resolution games or video footage. Ports. Ports are the various holes in your laptop that you can use to plug things in, such as a USB or an SD card. Keep in mind what you typically have plugged into your laptop when you're looking at options. You'll want at least one USB-C port, one USB-A, and a microphone or headset jack. If you often import from an SD card, look for a port for that. If you use a USB mouse, make sure you have an extra port available for that purpose. MacBooks typically have very few ports and almost no variety. For most models of MacBook, there are usually only two USB-C ports. These might not work with some of the devices you own, so keep this in mind. That being said, there are plenty of adapters on the market to accomplish tasks that are not possible with just a USB-C port, 
such as ports for projectors, SD cards, or USB drives. Final decision and purchasing. Once you've narrowed down your choices to just a few models, read some reviews to learn how other people have enjoyed their purchase. The reviews will give you an idea of things beyond what you can find in the specifications, such as how the hinge holds up over time, how hot it gets while running, how the trackpad or keyboard performs, and more. If you are able to get out to a store to physically see the laptop, that can also help in the decision-making process. You can see if you like the look and feel of it in person. Check the hinge. See if you can open it easily with one hand. Will it easily fit in your backpack? And more. Remember that technical perfection isn't everything. There's nothing wrong with choosing one laptop over another because you like the way it looks. Design is still important, even on the most high-tech laptops, because it'll be way more fun to use if you like it, instead of just tolerating the aesthetics for marginally better reviews or performance. When you've made your final decision, you can buy your laptop from the manufacturer's website or go into a physical store if there's one nearby. It always helps to shop around because you never know what kind of discounts you may find online, but remember to always choose a reputable dealer. Pay attention to specifications when comparing prices on different websites to make sure that you're comparing the exact same laptop. Some stores may offer better warranties than others. Keep this in mind as well as you search because it's nice to have a plan in case something goes wrong. It can be overwhelming to purchase a new laptop. With technology changing and new models being released what seems like every day, the search can feel confusing and never ending, and the list of specifications can feel like a different language. Hopefully this video has equipped you with the newfound knowledge you need to begin your search for the perfect laptop.